Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to determine the domain of a given function. So basically we're looking for the values of x for which f of x exists. So let's start by talking about the domain. When finding the domain of a function, we want to find every x value for which f of x exists and is a real number. When there is an x value which does not produce a real f of x number, then we call that a restriction on the domain. We usually write the domain in interval notation, removing restrictions from the intervals. So for example, if two creates some issue, uh, whereas the, the domain should be all real numbers, we would pull two out of the domain and we would write it as negative infinity to two and two to infinity. So we're just saying it's every real number from negative infinity to infinity, but we're pulling two out of the domain. Polynomial functions will never have restrictions on x and therefore will always have a domain from negative infinity to infinity or a domain of all real numbers. This is also true of absolute value functions. So some functions are kind of freebies, um, but what we have to look for is which ones will have restrictions. So one type of function that could have a restriction is a rational function, which is when we have a variable in the denominator. What issues do we have with denominators? Well, if it equals zero, that does not produce a real number. Two over zero is not a thing. So the restriction here is that x plus three cannot equal zero. That's not allowed in our domain. Then we'll solve for x. x cannot equal negative three. So we can plug in any value we want for x in the entire real number system except for negative three because every other number will produce a real number f of x. And then the way we write this is we say our domain is from negative infinity to negative three and from negative three to infinity. So we write this in interval notation and it looks like this. If you want to use set theory notation, what you could say is you could say the real numbers minus or without and then we put negative three inside a set of braces. You must use braces, you cannot use parentheses or brackets if you're gonna use set notation. That's a little less commonly used. We more commonly will use the interval notation such as this. Okay, in this example, we have g of x, which is given by x squared minus eight x plus 11. This is a polynomial, this is specifically a quadratic. We can plug in whatever we want. There's not gonna be any real number that we plug in for x that's gonna produce a not real number for g of x. So the domain here will be negative infinity to infinity. In this example, uh, let's talk about this. So with a radical, with a square root in particular, uh, square roots must be non-negative because if we take the square root of a negative, we don't get a real number or value, we get an imaginary number. So that means that the radicand 2w minus nine has to be greater than or equal to zero because if it's less than zero, then it's gonna be the square root of something negative, which as I said, is an imaginary number. So let's see what happens. We get two w is greater than or equal to nine, which means w must be greater than or equal to nine over two, or we could write that as four and one half. So for this one, w is greater than or equal to four and a half. That means that it's including four and a half, so we're gonna do a bracket, four and a half, and then it can be anything bigger so it can go up to infinity. And this would be the domain of this square root function. Here's another rational function. So what we wanna look for is we wanna look for restrictions. The restrictions will happen if the denominator is equal to zero. If the numerator is equal to zero, that's fine. That's actually just an x-intercept, um, which is, will produce a real number. If the, if the numerator is zero, then the whole answer is, uh, the whole fraction is zero, but we wanna be Careful, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so x squared minus three x plus two cannot equal zero. This is a quadratic, so we're gonna factor the quadratic into x minus two and x minus one. And then when we split this up, we're gonna say x minus two can't be zero and x minus one can't be zero either. Therefore, x cannot equal two and x cannot equal one. Now, if you look here, you might notice that this factor here could cancel with that factor there. And while we still have a restriction on the domain at two, that does indicate something about the graph later on that we're not gonna talk about in this video because it's not relevant. The restrictions on the domain are still this, even though we can factor out that x minus two. So the way we're gonna write this domain 
is we're going to say it's all real numbers from negative infinity to 1, and then from 1 to 2, and then from 2 to infinity. And that would be the domain of this function. In our last example, we have r of t is equal to t plus 8 divided by the square root of 12 minus t. Nothing wrong with the numerator. The numerator is a nice polynomial, it's a linear function, um, so we don't have to worry about that. The denominator, we have two issues. We have the radical, and it's also a denominator. So normally for a radical, things have to be bigger than or equal to zero, but because it's in the denominator, we have to take out the fact it, it cannot be zero, right? Because if we have a zero in the denominator, that's problematic. So what we're going to say is we're going to set the radicand greater to zero, greater than, excuse me. We're going to say that the radicand must be greater than zero. And why am I not saying we're equal to? Because we can't have the denominator. The fact that it's a denominator means it cannot be zero. So now we're going to get t by itself. We'll have negative t has to be greater than negative 12. Dividing both sides by negative 1 would be t is less than positive 12. Right? When we divide by a negative, we switch the inequality symbol. So in this case, t must be smaller than 12 in order for there to be a real number output. And the way we're going to write that, we're going to say it could be all real numbers from negative infinity to 12, and we don't include 12. So this would be the domain of this final function. Thank you for stopping by.